Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're coming to you from the Bacalette Beach Club and from here we'll eventually make our way to Cafe Havana. But where we are now is an exclusive boutique hotel, a place developed by former fashion model turned entrepreneur Gloria Jones Knapp. In creating this place, Gloria has been careful to preserve the natural terrain and wildlife. The New York Times says this place exudes the sense of being let in on an old secret. We'll tell you why, but first, let's look at our stories this week. The hurricane season has officially started. Three to six major hurricanes predicted. Tima says Tobago is prepared. A $7 million multi-purpose community center opens in East Tobago. And how your eating habits can save our environment. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Thanks for joining us at the Bacolet Beach Club, a small 20-room resort which has been described as the perfect escape. Here, you're surrounded by lush gardens of bougainvillea, bamboo with palms and almond trees, all of which provide natural shade. This hotel also enjoys direct access to its own secluded beach, a fact very few locals know. We'll leave it there for now because we want to tell you about the 2013 Atlantic hurricane season, which officially began on June 1st and will continue over the next six months. Forecasters are predicting between 13 to 20 named storms, six to 11 of which will strengthen into hurricanes, and three to six of these will become major hurricanes. This means this island has to be prepared. So what is the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, doing? Let's find out from Omadara Mills. This island was hit by Hurricane Flora in 1963, and in 2004, Ivan the Terrible claimed one woman's life, left several injured and many temporarily homeless. Then damage to the island was estimated to be around $18 million. One year later, Tobago was again affected by the passage of Tropical Storm Emily. All had lessons, but lessons Tobagonians can learn from as the 2013 Atlantic hurricane season begins. People need to prepare a family emergency plan. Your family emergency plan needs to look at certain elements. One, you need to look at the risk that you are exposed to. You need to have a proper contact listing. That contact list should include emergency numbers such as the fire service, Tiantec, WASA, Tima and 211. In a disaster, each family will need a proper supply of food, but foodstuff isn't the only important set of items needed for your family's emergency kit. Another area is your medical supplies. What are needed if there is an injury in the home? Then you'll also look at equipment, such as things like a tarpaulin, a shovel, a pickaxe, a proper cutlass. Mr. Stewart says Tima has been preparing to be Gunians for the season through several campaign and awareness activities. Very early in the year, we started with a community vulnerability and um, assessment. We have also, the, we are presently engaged in a wristland radio um, dialogue. The, all of these efforts is to ensure a certain level of readiness for the upcoming season. And now that Tima has done its part, it's now up to Tobagonians to ensure that they are hurricane ready. I'm Umudara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Sun, sea and sand. This combination continues to attract travellers the world over. But some of these very visitors are just as easily turned off by a destination with a large carbon footprint. Tobago prides itself on being clean, green, safe and serene. And now one of its beaches is closer to getting the stamp of approval from an international environmental organization. Details from Juliet James. Storbe Beach Facility attracts over 800 persons per day during the peak season. It's one of the island's most popular beaches and it's now in the process of securing blue flag certification. That is an international stamp of approval for beaches and marinas. 
The voluntary eco-label is administered by the Foundation for Environmental Education, known as FEE, and is granted to facilities that meet strict criteria in the areas of water quality, environmental education and information, environmental management and safety, and amenities that cater for the special needs of the physically challenged. The certification project is a joint initiative of the Division of Tourism and Transportation and the Tourism Development Company. From our mentor at FEE doing site visits to Storby, saying that we've had most of our um, infrastructure in place. The process has already begun with the construction of three ramps for the physically challenged. Handrails have also been installed on existing and new ramps and electronic gates at the changing rooms to accommodate those bound in wheelchairs. Space will soon be identified for reserved handicap parking and the signage erected which would allow all patrons to navigate the facility with ease. The system of water testing will also be implemented. Blue Flag is an echo labor program designed to promote and facilitate the sustainable development of beaches and marinas. A local NGO will be selected to ensure that all the standards of Blue Flag certification are maintained. The Blue Flag brand is recognized by many environmentally conscious travelers. From the Division of Tourism and the Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. It has the potential to transform lives. It's designed as a center for culinary classes, a space for performing arts, and a computer lab. What's more, it's hoped this facility will eventually be used as a long-distance learning center, collaborating with the country's tertiary institutions. Ballroom and contemporary dances, vocal renditions, a display of craft and skincare products, all done by members of the Betsy's Hope and Louisdor communities to put on show in their new multipurpose center. And as one member of the village puts it, none of this would be possible without a strong sense of camaraderie in the community, an attribute she hopes they'll never lose, even as they fully utilize the new center. I want the love that we are accustomed to in Betsy's Hope to remain. The new center includes facilities for members to carry out culinary classes, a space for engaging in the performing arts, and a computer room for those wishing to learn about the world around them without having to travel great distances. The Division of Community Development and Culture hopes that residents will take advantage of the opportunities to improve themselves as well as Tobago. Talks are also ongoing to have the facility used as a long-distance learning center. The commissioning of the center was facilitated by the division in an effort to provide spaces where Tobagonians can engage in meaningful social and cultural activities. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but coming up, how your food choices impact our environment. Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact SIT Mariah at 660-0065 or SIT Speyside at 660-6096. SIT 24-hour services, emergencies, medical or other. SIT Pro, the new face of emergency management. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the Bacalet Beach Club and as we promised, here's a look at the adjoining property, Cafe Havana. It's said this place is the soul of Tobago with a Latin flavor. It's connected to the resort by a charming little bridge and has a bit of the old and new. Even some Caribbean influences are thrown in here. But more specifically, there are aspects of traditional Cuba. 
but we must leave Cafe Havana at least for now to share with you a campaign which links some of our food choices to increased greenhouse gas emissions. It's said that when food is wasted, all the resources and inputs used in its production are also lost, which contributes to the destruction of our environment. Still don't get it? Davia Chambers explains. Sometimes we come to the market. We purchase an entire pineapple, an entire watermelon. We eat probably half or one slice, and then the remainder ends up wasting. But to ensure that we reduce our food print and think, eat, and save, the Department of Natural Resources wants us to remember the theme for World Environment Day 2013. That is, to think, to eat, and to save. The critical point is that we reduce our food print. According to the United Nations Environment Programme, food preservation is an effective way of saving food and preventing it from being wasted or lost. In fact, communities around the world have been employing food-saving methods for centuries in order to prolong its shelf life. Here at home, more needs to be done to ensure we do what's described as eating with ecology in mind. Put simply, becoming more aware of the environmental impact of the food choices we make. It's evident in you know, certain areas, you go to schools and you see boxes and that kind of thing full of food and people are just generally wasting food. We live in a wasteful society. That enormous amount of waste can negatively impact our environment, but the Department of Natural Resources wants to save this island from this pitfall. Tobago is a lovely place, right? And when you think about our natural resources, we are really rich in that. And if we want to preserve that, we, our island would benefit. We are into tourism, eco-tourism. We could benefit a lot from doing that. The advice? What I do personally, it's a lifestyle practice of mine. I don't, you know how we are as Tobagonians, we like to fill up the plate and, you know, small portions to begonians. So eat what you need to. Another great tip is to reduce our food intake, use leftovers, and make compost piles instead of disposing food. The agriculture organization says these steps will ease the burden on our natural resources and stem the negative environmental impacts. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're staying with the food theme a while longer. But this time, our focus is on our farmers, the people who play a key role in providing for the communities of Tobago. There's a campaign on to address their needs and get their feedback on how the agricultural industry on this island can be improved. Let's hear from Omadar Mills, who's been following the Farmers Forum. The farmers of Mount St. George understand their importance to the development of Tobago's economy. And with this in mind, many came with ideas they believe can strengthen the agricultural sector on the island. You will help us to set up the offices in the eight agricultural districts and just, you know, assess the people to see whether they want to do animals or whether they want to do plants. The Department of Agriculture is on a fact-finding mission throughout the island to hear firsthand the challenges and concerns of the farming community. And another suggestion from this Mount St. George district is to provide specific grants which will act as an incentive to persons to take up farming. The department could do much more for young people that might have a vision to get into agriculture or just might not have the financial resources to do such. So I find like with the BDU department probably you could have like a special grant to young farmers, make it easily accessible to them so they will not have a headache out of face of bank, they're not qualified, that kind of thing. That's a big deterrent. A few farmers are recommending that agricultural officers be more involved in field work and meet with the farmers out on the land where they work. They are supposed to be out on the field mixing and mingling with the farmers teaching the farmer how to plant, how to administrate this, how to do that. I think that's what they are trained for. I don't think they were trained for office work. Other major issues included the need for proper access roads and bridges to farm lands, more subsidies to farmers, and better procedures for acquiring land tenure. The Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment hopes to use these recommendations to create more concrete and sustainable strategies 
which will help Tobago's farmers in the future. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Unions sometimes get a bad rap. They're often accused of being rabble-rousers. But here in Tobago, the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association, TUTA, is doing more than rallying its troops. It's providing them with the tools of empowerment. They've got this part of management right. Day after day, supervising the education of our students. But their union wants to ensure that these teachers are just as prepared to deal with unexpected changes that may occur outside their classroom and in their personal lives. For today's session, they're hearing from economist Dr. Danisha Mahabir. We have to beg friends and family for money. What are these crises? You could never tell when you are going to get sick. You could never tell when there's going to be an accident. You could never tell when the car will break down. According to Dr. Mahabir, the world is facing economic hardships and that's the reason why the teachers should plan well. Let us talk about something that is unpleasant, a funeral. Relatives die. In Tobago, the family is important. That is a good thing, and I'll come back to tell you why. But when there is a funeral, it is expected, you know. It is not only husband, wife, and children that's the family here. It is husband, wife, children, uncle, aunts, grandmother, cousins, the whole network. You're expected to chip in. He says being an effective financial manager could also mean early retirement. How? Could you imagine with $100 you could earn the interest rate as someone who previously had $100,000? And so the little guy was nowhere disadvantaged. And even as the teachers got their lessons on becoming effective financial managers, they were also celebrated during the 73rd anniversary. Cecil Carruth has been named Teacher's Icon for 2013. Mr. Carruth is a former assemblyman, teacher, and principal. Awards were also given to the nine retirees. So we honored the retiring teacher. We have to respect the union that is tutor. Because I must tell everybody, it ain't easy to reach 73. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but do stay with us because on the other side, this island's heritage calendar to get a new event. Welcome back. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago from Bacalet Beach Club, a boutique resort located on a hillside with rooms which provide a spectacular view of the sea. This place shares a commitment to luxury and personal service, while its intimate size encourages a warm and friendly atmosphere. The hotel's infinity pool and surrounding wooden decks overlook Half Moon Bay and The Rock, the hotel's beach bar. But we're shifting gears from our location to the winner of this year's Caribbean Gospel Song Festival. Hers was a tough journey, which she says would not have been possible without help from the Division of Community Development and Culture. She journeyed from Tobago to Curaçao, twice for the same competition. In 2012, she placed third. This time, though, she won. That's right. Tobagonian J.M. Batiste is the 2013 winner of the Caribbean Gospel Song Festival solo division, beating 13 competitors. Honestly? I didn't want to go on, you know, a lot of things fell through, even with the team going, only, I was the only representative that went this year out of a continent of seven. 
Jayan says the competition was tough last year, so we wanted to know what she brought to the competition, which made her stand out this time. There was a lot of dependence on God, a lot more dependence on God, because last year I felt like I was so much more prepared. Um, I was rehearsing this song months before. I had a hot um, red, black and white outfit, you know, to represent Trinidad and Tobago. And all of that, and this year it was like, it was like, you know, when you do some, you do too much the first time and you say, okay, let's try less. I think that is what I did. She says her goal of making the island's presence felt was accomplished and she's hoping others can benefit from it as well. According to Jayan, winning the competition has been a humbling experience. So what's next for her? I am to return to Curacao next year for the next festivals to be a guest at the um, at this show. And I'm hoping that I could have at least a single or something to present then. Jayan is the second Tobagonian to participate in the competition and the first Tobagonian to win. To go. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. <laughs> From Jayan's feet in the Dutch Caribbean to India, well, not literally, it's a storytelling journey that shows the link between this island and the East Indian community. The collaboration has seen Tobagonians benefiting from educational and cultural opportunities, which allow them to showcase this island to the second most populous country in the world. Whether folk songs or traditional dances from India, the Tobago Hindu Society continues to show that they are holding the cultural and religious traditions from their motherland, India. The Tobago House of Assembly understands the need for Tobagonians of different races to keep their cultural ties. And to foster this, the Assembly continues to collaborate with the High Commission of India to provide scholarships to persons wishing to pursue studies in India. Sita Chandi Bipath, a Tobagonian, is living proof of this. Here's her story as told by the President of the Tobago Hindu Society. She was awarded a three scholarship by the Mahatma Gandhi Institute for Cultural Cooperation by the High Commissioner of India, His Excellency Mali Mitra, and assisted by the Tobago House of Assembly, the Honorable Orville London. Mrs. Bipath says that Sita continues to make Tobago proud. Sita brought honor and glory to the Tobago Hindu Society, her school, and our country by receiving this prestigious award from the Office of the President of New Delhi, India. Besides cultural activities and educational opportunities, the THA and the Indian High Commission also collaborate in areas of health and tourism. I'm Umdar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. This tradition began miles away in Europe as a fertility dance. It has since taken root in Tobago, and should all go as planned, it will be more than a one-off event. It will be a new festival on this island's heritage calendar. Choreographed pieces and circle dances around a tall pole, with each individual holding a colored ribbon, intertwining it into a web around the pole, or plaiting it to the pole itself. That's Maypole, and it's all about creativity, dancing, harmony, and coordination. And various cultural groups around the island came out to showcase all of that. But there's another aspect of the traditional festival, an aspect where ladies and girls get dressed up to cut a dash in bright colored flower pattern dresses that the May Queen.
to ensure that our culture is retained, the Tobago Heritage Festival Committee will be placing the Maypole Festival on its calendar of events. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. Earlier we told you that the hurricane season has officially started and it's predicted to be an extremely active one. Tima has told us what the agency is doing to ensure Tobago is prepared. That's their part. We wanted to know what have you done to become hurricane ready? This is what you said. I try to get my family together. I'm watching the location and looking to see where all the, um, the centers are to be more safe. I'm planning to secure the roof and um, make sure everything in stock like non-perishable items and make sure that no trees and leaning over my house now. Cut them down and that kind of stuff and that's about it. I'm a cricks, I'm a water, I'm a fireside waiting for when the hurricane come. In, right now I'm in the process of reinforcing my roof by putting the, um, the ceiling shops to really strap down your roof to make it real stable. Um, well, food stock, that is not, not an issue because I always have my vital supplies right by my side. We nearly galvanize on my roof and strengthen them, you know. I kind of like get the surrounding prepare and watching some trees I had to go and take down. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember, you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holland. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, here's a final look at Cafe Havana and the Bacalet Beach Club. Thank you.